Hey everybody, it's Leslie from, from Blog to Business, and I'm so excited that you're back with us. And we have a very special guest, Brandy Gleason. Welcome, Brandy. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So Brandy, for those of you who don't know her, runs uh, Gleason Family Adventure, an incredible blog, and Brandy's based out of Ohio. But I was lucky enough to meet Brandy at the Midwest Travel Network Conference. So that was such a blessing, Brandy, to run into you there and to listen to your um, your talk that you gave. And that's why I immediately asked Brandy to join us. I wonder if you as a blogger out there in the podcast and YouTube land have ever run into this problem where you feel like you can't reach enough people or you don't have anything unique and new and exciting to bring to the table with brands. Um, I think Brandy's got a really incredible answer for us. She runs a group, I'm going to get it right, um, Ohio Road Trips, and Brandy's group is 895,000 people strong. Brandy, that's incredible. Tell us a little bit about why you started that group and what it was like to uh, where'd you get the idea? Why did you do it? Give us a little background. All right. Well, thanks so much for having me on. And what got this going was COVID, that bad, oh. bad word. <laughs> I um, am a travel writer and all of a sudden, all my contracts and all my writing came to a screeching halt and it was stay home and stay safe. So embracing that because it was the right thing to do. Some friends and I wrote a book called Midwest Road Trip Adventures. And as the book was coming out, I thought, how in the world am I going to let people know about this road trip idea and give people things to do during this really difficult time? So I started Ohio Road Trips and it was just a place for me to share where to go on a picnic or where to take your family or where to take your friends. So it started out just as a way to help people during this hard time, and it has exploded. So it's not even three years old yet, and you have 895,000 people in there. That is insane. So let's back up a little bit for people who don't understand maybe what a group is and how it differs from a page. And do you have any, can, can you share with us uh, maybe a little bit about those differences and some things you took into account when you were creating it? Yeah, so one of the things that is different is the Facebook page is sort of like your landing page. It's where people know you, anybody can get to your Facebook page. A Facebook group is something you attach to your Facebook page. It can be a public group or it can be a private group. And I would highly recommend everybody make their group public because that makes it shareable and a, a great way for people to find you because when it's private, it's, it's harder to find. So that's why I made my group public and then connected it to the Ohio Road Trips page. But our pages are all connected to our personal page, which is like Brandy Gleason. Okay. So these are just pages underneath all of your main held page. So do you ever post anything on the page? Like, or does it just say like, join our group? <laughs> uh, no, I do occasionally. Um, I probably should do it more just like everybody else in the world. I have every plate spinning in the air, but a, a page can, it actually has naturally grown on its own. I think it has like seven or 8,000 followers on it, but lots of times what I'll do is share from the group to the page, maybe something of value that has been shared, like a destination or a place to eat. Then I'll just share that to the main page just to keep that kind of awake. Gosh, that's a really good tip. So I'm sure there are other people out there like me. When I first heard that, I was like, I want a group. <laughs> so maybe tell us maybe a little bit about um, how you focused on growing it. Maybe how you got, uh, got it noticed. What I can think of a hundred million reasons, like, um, uh, value, you know, why it's valuable, but maybe share with us what, um, what comes to mind for you. Cause I, I mean, that, that's a number I can't even get my head around. 
So I do think that my my group, Ohio Road Trips, was somewhat kind of dumb luck to some degree because everybody was staying home and staying safe. So they didn't really have a lot to do, right? We were all scrolling. We were all streaming Netflix and drinking wine at night. So avoiding the news. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I do think that there was that little bit of element to that. However, um, it has continued to grow. And I think the most important piece to making that continued growth is to give very good information that I'm knowledgeable about and sharing those things on a very consistent basis, knowing what time is a good time that people might be in your group because Facebook will let you know in your analytics. So I do make sure that I'm posting when it's a a time that people are online. Um, And that has, I think, helped the continued growth. So um, I remember one of the things you said was post consistently, but don't post too much. How do you figure that out? Do you just post once a day? Do you? You know, it. (laughs) I'm a travel writer, so it just depends. Sometimes I even (laughs) post when I'm not supposed to post because it's eleven (laughs) o'clock at night and I have something I want to say. So I, I just do what works for me. But I do, I do think that it's important to only give things of value. So if you look at my group. I do let people know who I am, but it's more about the destinations and it's more about letting myself be a, letting people know that I do know about these things here in Ohio. And I do have the, I think the word is the, I'm kind of an authority on the state. And somebody even said the queen of road trips, right? So I use what I know and I share what is the cream of the crop. I don't just post stuff just to be posting, right? It doesn't just to to post to post is not, I don't think very, very beneficial. I think you should post the things that resonate with you, the things that are important to you, the things that you love, the things that would take you back for more. And I think that's what makes it successful. What do you think, when I think about uh, my own Facebook page, So I have, I use Meet Edgar and I rotate things on there. And then I share like, oh, I just read this and that sounds really cool. And I share that with the group. Um, What do you think is different about the group technology that makes sharing those gems in a group better um, or more advantageous than sharing it just directly to your page? So in my opinion, a group is a community. So you've created this space where you've brought together people who love what you love or wanna know about the things that other people are doing or what they know. So it gets this community of people talking and then it gets exciting and then more people talk about it. And so it keeps popping up into people's feeds where your page is kind of like a one and done where the group just keeps going and going and going. I had somebody yesterday post a question and she turned off the comments and said, okay, after a thousand answers, I think I know what to do. And so that, you know, people want to share what they love or foods that they like to eat or that hidden gem in their little town. So that's, I think, what sets apart a group from a page because it's more than just one voice it's more than just my voice it's the Buckeyes voice so to speak they want to share what they love in their state did people and again I know it was during COVID but did was it easy to get people commenting and and producing that user generated content or did you at the beginning was it crickets or did it happen no I I think it's because I started sharing about places you could I love I'm an outdoors person I love to be outdoors you if you want to make me happy let's go on a hike I just love being outside so I had all this knowledge about places where you could be outdoors Mm -hmm. and that was the only place that people felt comfortable at first was Mm -hmm. going on a picnic or finding a state park so I just put it out there and it just on its own accord did what it's was supposed to do that's crazy. So um, oh, the other thing that you had mentioned was um, at, at the conference was going live. So you go live in there regularly, right? Because face, does Facebook pops up for people who are members when you go live? So if you remember correctly, I said, do as I say, not as I do. With that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> um, I do go live. 
I try to go live. I try to remind myself to go live, but I do try to also live in the moment when I'm at a destination. So I try not to think like I'm working sometimes when I'm there for somebody, but going live is in real time. People can see your face. They can see what you're seeing. They can know that you're just not creating content to create, create that content. They're like, oh my gosh, yes, that is a beautiful waterfall. It really does yes. like going outside. <laughs> yeah. And I can hear the birds in the background and I can see the water rushing over the fall. So that I think is, is very, very good to do is to go live so that people are number one alerted that you're on you're live on Facebook, that they can come and see what you have to say. And then also you're giving real time, you know, content about something that you are actually really enjoying. I think I imagine it probably boosts your authority too. I mean, if you're going live on a road trip, then you're like, yes, I'm just adjusting my crown as queen of oh yes, the queen of road trips. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what um any other tips for just getting noticed? I mean, I'm assuming you share it from your blog and um, you know so it's really interesting facebook so facebook groups have been around since the inception of facebook it's actually one of the oldest really? components of facebook right because remember we used to join those groups where we didn't know people and your parent would say oh my gosh you're talking to strangers online <laughs> so it's been around for a very long time but um what is happening now with facebook groups is that you're able to share that from your page or whatever you're doing so that in and, and facebook groups is a community i think i, I i'm going to circle back to that word community because in a world of technology we are brought together online and on an online space and i think that's why facebook keeps sharing their groups out to your feed different people's feed like click here things that it says things you might like or groups you might like at the top of your page, your personal page. And that's how that continues to grow. Well, yeah. I mean, it makes sense for Facebook, right? They, they can keep you on the product, then they're happy, but then that works for you too, because it's fulfilling that community need that you have. It's kind of crazy how we're so connected and so not connected at this I know, right? time in the world. <laughs> That's why I like to tell people, hey, come to one of my book signings when I'm in my group, because then that helps me to get to meet those people and face to face and be able just to connect outside of the, the platform. Right. And then, well, and then you've got a raving fan at that point. Like I, you know, my, I don't want to say I have favorite students in my classes, but the truth is like everybody who I can meet in real life, I like feel this deeper connection, even if it was like just having coffee and talking about the weather. Yeah. And when you meet people in real life, after you've made a community online, you also can see the joy that your work has brought to their life. I love that. I love that. Okay, so I, um, for anybody who's watched my shows before, you know I'm a numbers geek, a stats geek, and um, one of my favorite screens from you at the, at the presentation was about KPIs, so um, you're obviously keeping track, and there's some special numbers that you look at as you grow. Can you share that with us? So I not your num not your numbers, but that's I mean, all right. I keep things very simple. I like to kind of I always go on the back end just to see how many people are joining. You know how fast is you know how many people have joined. So that way I know do I need to do an introduction again? Is it time oh. to say hey you know my name is Brady Gleason. I run Gleason Family Adventure. I'm a writer. I started this group just to you know share what I love, and that helps people know who's kind of in charge and why. The group exists. Uh, so keeping track of how many people are joining and kind of have a number every 500 people. I want to, you know, reintroduce myself or whatever. And then I also like to look at the engagement. Um, am I letting too many questions in? Have I not let enough questions in? Do I need to so do you're monitoring every question? Everybody has to get approval. Every question. Well, the problem is with almost 900,000 people in your Facebook group, you get between 100 and 200 questions a day. If you would let in that many questions, how many people would unfollow your group? Everybody, because no one wants to see 200 questions about, and repetitive questions about- Where should I take my kid hiking? <laughs> yes, or where can I find the best waterfalls? Or what's there to do in Hocking Hills? And it's like, 
well, that question was just asked uh, two days ago. So we try to make sure that what's coming in is fresh and new and makes sense. Uh, but you do have to follow your analytics on the back end to make sure you're working enough to get eyes on what you're trying to communicate. So I do keep track of engagement. Um, and I, and the more, if you, and then there's also the time I know I'm going to be busy and I'm not going to have time to moderate my group. And I know that I can't let a lot of number, like a lot of questions in or whatnot. So I will watch that to make sure that I don't get too busy during a time that I'm not maybe going to have Wi-Fi or something like that hmm. because a group that's unmoderated is a group in trouble I love that you said you hired family members now to help you out with the moderation that's very clever yeah well it was either that or never sleep because social <laughs> media never sleeps so I've had to make sure that the you know family is kind of keeping eyes on it as well so yeah that's really cool. So, um, okay. So watching engagement, uh, moderating the amount of questions that come through, do you, and do you encourage people to see like, I mean, if 50 people a week are asking for the best waterfall, do you encourage people to like, you can use the search feature? To Absolutely. And then because people love my group, right. They're I have my own little army of people who were like, have you not seen them say use the search option? You know, <laughs> so I, so you get these people who are like, as love, uh, they love what you're doing. And so they keep track too. And they're, so those people are like, Hey, by the way, we, we said this and we told people to use the search option. And so that's helpful actually to have other people now reminding people, please don't. And but, to be honest, sometimes I get negative DMs. Somebody will slide into my DM and tell me, you know, what kind of person doesn't let my question in. And I try, and I have rules. So there are rules that they have to accept when they join. And one of the rules, number eight, is we only allow 20 to 40 questions in a day. And um, we take all holidays off. And I you, love that you setting expectations up front. Yeah, the up front. Don't expect, and not only that, this is an unpaid Facebook group. I'm doing this for free. It's for your enjoyment. And please don't punch down on the moderator. And so that you know, <laughs> we do, you know, there are times. And one thing I would encourage everybody who's considering a group based on this question is that just remember you're in charge. This is your group. And you do not have to let people tell you how to run your group, how many questions you should put in, how much time you should put in. You, no, I, your so I am a people pleaser and I need, I needed that permission from you that just totally resonated with me. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, with a large following of people, you can think, oh, well, just one more or just one more. I should just do one more thing. No, nope, I'm going to put my phone down. It's time for bed. It's okay. And you can, you can disengage. It's, it's all right. It'll be there in the morning. And people, I think those people begin to respect your boundaries when you're respecting your own boundaries also and if they don't then then they say something there's a great feature called the block option I'm not afraid to use it I love that so you are a stickler though right I, uh, for following the rules like people putting spammy stuff up or um uh saying being ugly I think you were saying at the yeah. thing like if somebody's ugly you're just like you're gone yeah, I so one thing you should know about me is I have eight children, and so I pretty much have no energy left. And so <laughs> if you try to suck my energy, what I what little bit I might have for the day, and you're you you're using, I call them keyboard keyboard warriors. You're behind your screen saying and doing things to destroy a business, to destroy a community, or to just say something plain mean to somebody else. There is a, a phrase in one of my rules, we have a zero tolerance policy. I don't let you know you're gone. You're probably just gone. And that's all right. So that, so this, it's kind of scary to me when I think, okay, if I have a group, when I get started, there would be, let's say 20 people in my group. And I'm just so excited to get person 21. And then they say something where I'm just like, oh, well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not blatantly ugly, but it's just kind of like, oh, I don't, like, I wouldn't have said that. 
it's kind of scary. Like when I'm trying to grow, I think, do I really get rid of them? And how many people are they going to tell? And I mean, do you? No, I don't. It doesn't matter. The the thing is, is if somebody is going to be hurtful, um, not only will, so this is a, this is a great segue into this question that you haven't asked me yet, um, is that Facebook also is monitoring your groups too. And they will remove content if you don't. And they will send you a message that says, you know, hey, you have this alert. You know, you didn't do your job as a moderator and admin. This person's comment has been taken down. You probably should be the one taking it down before Facebook starts to take things down out of your own group. So the um, I think what you're referring to is some tools within Facebook that help yeah. you moderate that. Talk to me about those. Yeah, so Facebook had a great update recently in groups about, oh, I don't know, almost eight to 10 months ago. And there are so many things that you can do to make it so you don't have to be moderating all the time. So I just was working on one before Leslie and I got on today, where I was putting in words that I can't say because we'll get beeped and uh, or things that people do that they shouldn't be doing. And I put those words in and Facebook will automatically delete those comments for me and send them a message that says this comment has already has been deleted by Facebook. So it doesn't. So you're not even the bad guy. (laughs) I'm not even the bad guy. Facebook is. So that is a really great solution to, you know, people maybe looking at, like you said, making someone mad online, somebody you don't know, and are they nuts or whatever? Right, right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, you know, letting it, let Facebook be the bad guy, which they, and they are willing to do that. That's really cool. So um, I think the the next question I wanted to talk to you about was um, maybe an incentive for doing this. So we, we were talking, we were chatting offline and one of the incentives for blogging or Facebook groups or YouTube videos, is just helping people. There's that beautiful feeling you get inside when you feel like you're impacting someone's life and helping them have a good vacation or showing them a cool recipe or whatever. And that should absolutely not be overlooked. But if you can make some money while you're doing that, then all the better. I wanted to talk to you about um, some of your monetization strategies or monetization strategies that, you know, other people have used with groups. But I have, I want to start with, if you're okay with it, one that, um, or or a prerequisite that that you've put on my heart, and that is to really focus on a niche, because if you don't have the right niche, then it's going to be harder to have the right people to help and to monetize with. What do you you share more about that? Yeah, for sure. So monetization, everybody will, if you ever meet me, you'll see that Brandy moves very, very slow and I don't (laughs) do things until I'm ready. And so a lot of my monetization maybe has come because somebody has approached me because I've, I've been working on a different project. But one of the things about Facebook groups is that you're bringing together people in real time who are coming to your group where they're looking for specific information. And if you have that information in a way to monetize, to get them that information, then this is a great way to do it. For myself, I don't do a lot of monetization. We were talking about affiliate links and things like that. Um, I let my work speak for itself in different ways. So the group hasn't been a space that I've tried to monetize a lot, but, um, there are multiple ways to do that. And I would be happy to like tell you more about that. Maybe if we were on a one-on-one, but I think that I think that if I, if I had one piece of advice is when you start your niche or your group, don't look at it as dollars, look at it as giving good information. And then those ideas will come after you've created a community who respects you and wants your knowledge, because then even they're going to be wanting to maybe have a private group where you're giving information in a small, like maybe a membership type group that you'll create based off the group that's free. So you don't give everything away in your main group. You have maybe a membership group for more information or something like that. I love that. And then the other thing is just sharing your content, right? I mean, if you have ads on your site and you're sharing your content, if you've got an article that's, 
I'm thinking about like if I have an article that's brand new, even if it's perfectly beautifully SEO optimized, it's not getting any traffic when it's brand new. I can send it out in my email list. That would be my first step. But then if you share that with the group, I mean, if you if you wrote this article, it's obviously something you're passionate yeah. about. So you could share it in the group. And then if they're reading it, then that's, I mean, that's a simplest form of monetization. Very much. So again, you're going to, all of you people who are monetizing and you think you want to make a business out of this, you're going to be like, Brandy Gleason is so dumb. However, <laughs> When I share a post into my group, I have, I have zero ads on my website. Okay. Cause I hate going to what I know, I know. And it's because I hate reading blogs and all these ads pop up. And then I, I'm so ADHD type. I just click out and I don't read it. So I wanted my blog to be a space where people didn't feel like I did overwhelmed sometimes. And wow. so, but I will tell you when I share a blog specifically into my group, um, sometimes it can be read over 10 to 20,000 times within a week. That's because yeah. they trust you. Yeah. So Yes, I might not be making money, but uh, because I don't have ads on my website, but if you do and you have a big group, that's how many times it can be read. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and you shared with me that you don't share affiliate links on there. And I love right. what you were saying because, and to correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying like, why am I going to jeopardize my relationship with them for, you know, a whopping 80 cents for this link or that link is that is that fair yeah so fair, fair summary of what you were saying yeah so like with affiliate links also the climate is constantly changing like our fcc laws and so forth and so on so to me it has to really make a lot of sense to do an affiliate link i have one that i use and it's for amazon for a whole three percent just like the rest of you right. and um it was for my book and it's on my website and i and i would drop it into the facebook group because that was my way of, of sharing where where they could buy my book however now i got smarter and did a square up site where i can sell my book so when i drop the link in the group now i sell the book and I make $8 instead of three cents. So <laughs> thinking, you know, think about what's the best, you know, what is the best way? And, and not only that, they're getting a signed copy of my book instead of a book, you know, shipped from Amazon. So, yeah. you know, think about what's best for you. Um, I think affiliate links can be good. I just, there are a lot of work to maintain and think about and you just don't make a ton. So, right, right. I have to think, um, so I have, uh, I think I shared with you, I have a group that I don't own, but I'm uh, an admin in. It's about hiking. And uh, one of the ways that I was able to leverage that group, I mean, it's so small compared to yours, but was in a brand deal that I did. They asked for a hundred things and then they won and I gave them a dollar amount and they wanted to come down in the dollar amount. And I was like, well, let's keep it here. But what I'll throw in is, you know, 10 posts over the next year within this group, which was right in line with their niche. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a way, I wouldn't say I made money from it, but I was able to, it was an easy thing to add for a company that I believed in that let me not have to negotiate down the money in a brand deal. So that's mm -hmm. that's one thing that I did. Yeah. Monetization. And I think that's good. And also, I think another thing I would love to, to really throw out there is money's not everything. So only work with things that you would really use or something that you really like, or, you know, because you're putting your reputation out there in a group. And so you want people to know that if you're saying you bought this product or you like this product, it's actually really something you do like. Right. The whole integrity thing is pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk about some do's and don'ts. Okay. So um, a couple that I can think of that we've talked about already do um, make it public and not private. That was important. Um, do keep track of your KPIs. Mm -hmm. do be really clear about your theme mm -hmm. do set up 
really clear rules and don't be afraid to enforce them. Do you have, so those are kind of what we talked about. Tell me, do you have any more do's and don'ts for us? Um, I, I do think you should keep your, the niche part. I think it's a really important that you stay with it. Don't, I, one of the things I did do for brands or places that I'm working with that are outside of Ohio, I do a travel Tuesday where only as an admin, I'm allowed to post about an outside of Ohio destination. And then people can put things in the comments about outside destinations. So it's giving people an opportunity to talk about things that you don't normally don't allow in. Mm -hmm. But so do come up with creative ways to expand your niche just a little bit. Um, but but not, I like how you have the boundaries, again, boundaries, but boundaries yes. around like this is, I can do this. This is what you can do. This is when to expect it. It's not every day. And oh, right. that's great. So I think that that would be the extra do I would add on that. Any other do's or don'ts? So don't, on? don't over promote yourself. Um, I think that that's uh, a temptation that you might get into is like, oh, I have this platform of all these people who do like what I have Make to say. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, here I am. Um, so I do talk about myself, but one of the things I was telling you is like, so knowing how many people are joining. So every 500 people, I reintroduce myself. Hey, I'm Brandy Gleason with Gleason Family Adventure. I'm an author. I started this group just to uh, share my love of Ohio. And I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. Um, but don't be link dropping yourself all the time. Don't be like people, I think will leave your group. If you become, it's all about you because they joined it for a reason, whether it was for cooking recipes or for dog friendly places or travel. Uh, yeah. Keep it focused on that. Do you have um, any ratio that you follow for, like, if you talk about, let's say you talk about one thing a day, you're sharing information, like how many times out of the week would that link go to somewhere else versus your own content? I mean, so like any putting my my stuff in the group how often I do it yeah oh goodness so in the comments if I have a specific blog post I might have written I will if I have time see that's a problem is every time time is my own worst enemy right so if I have time I will link drop so that they have more information if I don't I'll just try to ta tag the business or just put the name of the the business in there um and for my own personal self oh goodness I probably should put more links about who I am in the group <laughs> probably. So that's my advice. Maybe be, be thinking more about uh, when it's appropriate when not, when it's not appropriate, but at least once or twice a week, I try to give some targeted information so that people have ideas. First, for example, in October, I'm already planning October out. Like I already know like what I'm going to put in the group. So I'm always kind of planning ahead. So um, you do have, and, you have an editorial calendar ish. Oh uh, yeah. I'm so old school. I do it on a piece of paper. I don't like using, um, well, online tools for what, just, for the record, I am a paper planner person too. I love okay, it. Well, that makes me feel better. Um, <laughs> just because when I, post things in real time, they do much, much better than something that I try to schedule through a scheduling platform. But in October, I already know that I need to have all my pieces updated for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And so the tip would be, do be the first person to post about the most popular things so that your content is seen as the authority on that topic. So if you have a piece for myself about Christmas lights, it goes in at the last two weeks of October and then it gets read a hundred thousand million times and it went to my website and not to the person who gets the first pictures in about Christmas lights. So you put it in before people are, you want to help them plan their Christmas light trip. You don't want to um, wait until it's Oh, it's time to plan it. No, right. people are planning you missed the lights it. last weekend. <laughs> yeah. So that, that I'm already, you know, I think about those things. So I know when to put the valuable information in, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. Um, don't just post a post, you know, I'm very intentional about making sure that what I'm going to put in here is beneficial to the people who are reading it. 
Now, do you let other people add links? Businesses or? No. That is a clear, this is a no promotion, no spam group. If they want to advertise, my email is in the rules and they can email me and say, I'd like to do this. Nine times out of 10, my answer is no. Um, because it's something like a cleaning lady or, you know, how does that pertain to a road trip? Right. Again, it goes back to, oh, do you want to make money or do you want to give good information? Right. Oh, right. I could let that link in and she'd pay me to do it. Well, it doesn't matter because it's not beneficial information. So um, with advertising, you know, you just, if people want to advertise their link or something, then. Yeah. So they have to. And if I catch you, if we catch people doing yeah, it, okay. but if we catch people link dropping, they are blocked. Oh, I've right got away. so many Airbnbs. It's not even, well, it's a rule. No promotions, no spam. I would love so to good help at that. you. I would love to help you in your business. But if you're not willing to put some skin in the game to help me like work, <laughs> right. it's work to run this group, then you can't be just link dropping. And another thing is don't let people put, uh, I'll DM you or you know, send me a DM and I'll give you the information. That's usually somebody who's selling something to somebody. Um, people can be scammed. I mean, you, you're, as an admin, I want to protect people from that kind of stuff. So, you know, we don't allow, if you say, you start saying DM me, you might get blocked. I love that. I love that. That's so good. So what, um, I'm going to wrap it up because you've been so generous with your time. But I want to leave people with a challenge. So if somebody is listening to us and they're like, I want to start a Facebook group, what would their next tiny step be? What would, what would you encourage people to do like when they hang up, you know, when they stop listening to us? So the best next step is to figure out what you are most knowledgeable in. What is your niche? What do you know? And what valuable information can you give to people? Once you know that, then you need to start your group and make sure that it's connected to your Facebook page. Easy next step. At least it sounds easy. The, yeah. niche, the niche is the key, I think, right? I mean, the, the picking the right theme, the right niche is, is going to be key. Yeah, don't pick something you don't know because they'll they'll have you called out in 2.2 seconds that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Love that. So, Brandy, do you... I know you've worked with a couple people. I'll call out um, Michigan and Indiana. If you want to share their those uh, the group names for those, um, please do. But um, what if people want to need a little advice? Do you offer that for people? So um, one of the things that I've done where there are two other bloggers, and we were going to talk about this, but since you it, it didn't get asked, we're, I'm going to I'm gonna throw it in. Please do, please. So the online space is a big, big space, and you are not the only authority out there. So find other people who you can collaborate with to create some great online spaces. I have two friends who are helping with an Indiana road trips group and a Michigan road trips group. Um, I also am smart enough to know I am not an authority on those states. Yes, I do know some things, but I wanted to find two people who knew more than I did and who are integratable and who work hard. So I asked them to co-admin these groups with me. We're 50-50 owners on them. And um, that was a great way to, to do that. And if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one time, I would be happy to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't have any groups and I don't have any classes yet. Um, although I would say people like Leslie are pushing me to get that information together for you folks. But right now I am in a space where I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm finishing up a book and it's due date is September 15th. And once I get that rough draft in, I we'll think call you before September 15th. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I can do one on one prior to that, but until September 15th, I am, you know, pen to paper, keyboard, fingers to keyboard, trying to get all the, the last minute things done to get that book turned in. That's exciting. So I'll put your, would it be okay if I put your email address in the yeah. show notes and people be can great. contact you? And uh, Gleason Media LLC is where they'll contact you at. But thank you so much for sharing this. I can't tell you, I haven't stopped thinking about this since um, listening to you. So I hope we've encouraged some other people to think about it too, because it's just a, 
great way to share more information and reach more people and impact more lives. So thank you so yeah. much, Randy. Thank you for having me.